I have redone my Patreon tiers. For $1 per month, you get priority on requested video topics, a fancy role in my Discord server, and access to a Patreon-only chat. For $5, you get all of that, plus early access to spare room episodes, and your name listed at the end of my videos for one month. For $10, you get everything already listed, plus a PDF copy of my ebook, 365 Days of Character Development, and an exclusive sticker fulfilled by Patreon. Once we see how this goes, I may be adding more merch in the future, so check all of it out in the link down below. So, how do we increase the reader's heart rate and change their breathing? Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about writing jump scares. So you're probably thinking, what the hell? Jump scares are a visual medium. How are you going to write a jump scare? Well, you kind of can't. But I've got a method that employs the same effect as a jump scare that you can put into your writing. So let's get into it. When it comes to horror, it's all about building up that tension and letting it release at the right moment. And I'll be the first to admit, humans are visual creatures, so it's much easier to do that tension and release in a visual medium like TV shows and in movies. It's to the point where some people think jump scares are cheap and they're tired of seeing them. But it's not like that in writing, and that's the benefit of employing it here. In writing, you can draw out that tension, let your reader get wrapped up in the buildup, and they kind of do the jump scare to themselves. Your goal is not only to build the tension, which I have a video about, I'll link it up in the card for you so you can go watch that building tension video, but this is also about building a sense of dread. You want to activate that fight or flight response. If you've ever had a panic attack or a bout of anxiety, think about what that does to your body. It makes your heart beat faster. It changes your breathing. And that's because it's activating that fight or flight response. It's getting extra oxygen to your brain because at any moment, that tiger is gonna pop out of the jungle and eat you. So how do we increase the reader's heart rate and change their breathing? Pay attention to your punctuation. What do commas and periods and other punctuation marks tell us to do? They tell us when to breathe. So how do we control a reader's breathing? If they're effectively wrapped up in the story, then they're going to breathe when they see one of those punctuation marks. If you're really wrapped up in a story, you'll do this as well. So next time you're reading a book that you're really enthralled in, pay attention to when you breathe. It's likely whenever you see a period or a comma. This means that when we're building up that tension, we want to start out with longer, more drawn out sentences. And then as that tension ramps up, we want to shorten the sentences and shorten the sentences and shorten the sentences. This is going to make your reader take breaths more frequently. And when their body reacts like that, it's going to start to activate that fight or flight response, just like it would if you were actually hyperventilating. Don't worry, of course they aren't. They will be perfectly fine. They're just reading. But even in that safe environment, it's going to trigger that fear response. That means quicker breathing is going to make their heart beat faster and it's going to make them feel that sense of dread. Then, when that response is sufficiently underway, have the monster pop out or have the gun go off or whatever it is that you've been building up to that the reader is now scared of happening. On the flip side, you can have your reader not breathe and trigger all that same stuff. So if we make our readers breathe faster by having shorter sentences, how do you think we make our readers not breathe? By over time, increasing our sentence length. Put in sentences that are far too long, things that you would never actually speak in, that you would never actually put into any sort of casual conversation or emails or text messages. Add in all those flowery descriptions, string clauses together that you typically wouldn't, put in conjunctions even if you don't need to. And just like with the shorter sentences, if your reader is sufficiently enthralled in the story, they're going to hold their breath. Then, when you want to dispel that tension, have the pacing suddenly go back to normal. For example, that super creepy cafe your main character just sat down in, draw out the sentences, describe everything going on in that cafe, and then flip back to normal as soon as the waitress approaches for the drink order. So the point is, it's all about pacing. How do you know if you did it right? I recommend employing one of my favorite proofreading techniques. Read everything back to yourself out loud. Notice when you take a breath while you're reading. 
that's likely when your reader will subconsciously take their breath when they're reading. And if you don't feel like the pace of the breathing is correct for what you're writing, then go back and play with the length of your sentences and where you put commas. Combine or divide those sentences until you have a pace that you're happy with. So now that you know the technique, let's take a little aside here and talk about this from a role-playing perspective because, of course, I'm a role-player, that's what this channel is about, and you're probably a role-player too. Techniques like this do require more words and more writing to be effective. That means this sort of thing is going to work best in multi-para or novella-style roleplays. If you're one-lining, then I'm sorry to tell you there's really no way to effectively do this technique. And if you're doing single para like I typically am, you'll find when you employ a technique like this, your posts grow longer naturally. And one other thing, this can be overused. Just like when a horror movie relies too much on jump scares and they start to feel cheap, if you rely too much on pacing to elicit that fear and that dread in your partner, they're gonna start to clue into what you're doing and it's not gonna affect them as much. Fear, dread, anxiety, these all rely on the unexpected. So use it sparingly to elicit the best response. So what do you guys think about this technique? Have you used it before? Are you gonna try to use it now? Let me know down below. And for the record, I did not come up with this. I came across it in all of my reading about how to write tension and horror better. So links down below to some other writing and ideas about similar techniques so that you can get some more information about how to effectively use this. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.